Amen. Amen. Uh, we do miss the Queens today. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Peggy, for the, the music. And thank mm -hmm. you. Elder. I didn't get a chance to, uh, to hear you this morning, but I did hear you. Mm -hmm. God bless you and thank God for you. Amen. Uh, we're in the book of, my wife is not here because she had an allergy attack. And so uh, she's there in the bed. And my granddaughter is working. And of course, my daughter uh, is working also. Verse 23 of the book of uh, Thessalonica. Thessalonians. Fifth chapter. We're not going to stay here long. <clears throat> and the God of peace. Sanctify you, holy, and may your spirit, soul, and body be reserved without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of things are said in the recovery footnotes, but I know what the Lord has done for me. Yes. And how He set me free. Uh, yes. Right. He did set me free back in 1977. Set me, I was a prisoner of the, uh, of the system. I was a prisoner. And I did what those in the prison do. And they were not very pleasing to the, to Jesus. Amen. And there's a thought that when you try everything, there is one that you never tried. That's Jesus. Amen. Mm. Amen. You have to realize <coughs> that in trying things, God has given you that privilege to try. Mm -hmm. He won't stop you. Mm -hmm. He'll let you get in just as much trouble as you can possibly handle it. Sometimes you can't even handle it. Amen. Amen. I remember one night in Germany. They got in a fight in the in the in the bar. And I'm right in the middle of it. Not even know why they were fighting. But I'm in the middle of it. Swinging and been swung at. I think I told you the story before. I fell down, running out of the building. Now. They were chasing us, and I fell down and rolled on a car. And I heard them go by. I look back now and see it was God that was watching. Yes. Yes. Look back over your life and see where God actually, in his sovereignty, played a big role in you being where you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Pieces. That's one of them. But further back in your own life, you can see why God rescued you. Yes. And you should have been dead. Amen. Or in jail somewhere. Amen. And I'm saying all that to help us see what Paul is talking about here. And the word that I, I like in, is in verse 22 and 20, uh, 21. But prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from evil of every kind. Amen. We're going to get to the body and the soul and the spirit, but Paul was laying groundwork here that appearing in places where it can be misconstrued that you are doing something evil. Yes. And you're really not. Right. But because of the, the mind of others, it appears that you may be doing something and you may, not, you, know, you may not be doing anything at all. I've been there where it looked like I was doing something and I was accused of it, but I wasn't. Right. But he says, abhor all appearance 
abstain from all that which is evil. That the God of peace sanctify means to set you apart. Holy, may your spirit, soul, and body preserve completely without blame at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about the three parts of man. Three parts. He mentioned the, the soul, the spirit, the soul, and the body. What Paul did here, if I'm, if I'm reading him correctly, he said the spirit. The spirit is here, the soul, and the body is the sheath that houses the body, houses the, the soul and the spirit. The body is for expression and how to get in contact with the material world, right? That's what the body is for. The body eats and does everything that a body, if it's healthy, can do and has to do with the world system. Participating in the riding, me and Jay rode our bikes yesterday. Uh, Going swimming, uh, walking, going to your car, getting in your car, getting in your bed, getting out of your bed, going to make breakfast, or going to your job, working, performing on your job, has it all to do with the, what, the body and its contact with the physical world. All right? Yes. Then there is a, another part of the man called the soul of a man. The Bible teaches that God stooped down into the dust of the earth and formed man from the dust of the ground and man became a what? A living soul. A soul. That was a tree that he would eat from we call the spirit the tree of life. He failed to eat of it. He ate of the tree of good and knowledge and evil. Therefore man in his first state of being was a, a dichotomy. He was only two. He had a spirit in it, but the spirit was dead after Adam ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What I'm alluding to this morning, uh, church, is that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. The soul consists of the mind. The will, the conscious, and your will, your mind. The body responds to the activities that the, the mind is like a, a place where you make decisions. It's the information that you get over a long period of time helps you determine to make proper decisions. When you're young, you make your decisions based off of that which you acquired over the years until that time. As you get older, you acquire, you acquire more information and your mind changes over a period of years. I was talking to uh, Pastor Temple yesterday. Uh, we had a chance to go down and celebrate his grandson's birthday, he was talking about the our young children, our grandchildren, and our children, how their minds are not actually ready for what it, they get involved with. So they need to be around good, solid individuals to help them to grow and to mature. Amen. I think the Bible says, train of a child in the way it should go, and it won't depart from it. Amen. I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this, this is proper here. You can train up a child the way he should go, but at the same time, somewhere in that going, he's going to do what he wants to do. But I, I think the writer said the groundwork has already been laid. So if he goes astray, he will come back. If there's no groundwork, then he, he will go astray and never come back. 
You see what I'm saying? Yes. Um, go with me to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verses, uh, verses 20 and 22, I believe. Proverbs chapter 4. See here it says, My son, knowledge the the depths of were broken up. Uh, that's not it. It's chapter two, I believe it is. No, it's not chapter three. Chapter four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chapter four. My son, be attentive to my words. This is Solomon talking to, I think his name was Jeroboam, his son. He says, My son, be attentive. To my words. Lay a foundation with these words. Incline thy incline your ear to what? To my sayings. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Learning over a period of time. From the from older individual or from your mother, mm -hmm. from your father, mm -hmm. from teachers, from preachers, from pastors, from elders, help you to grow and mature in the things of Christ. But you have to respect those individuals to obtain that information and keep it. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you don't love a person, you really don't care too much about what he or she is saying. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may hear it, but you don't want to, want to attend to it. Because it actually absolutely means nothing to you. The Bible says that Jesus said, if you love me, you, you'll do what? Keep, Keep my commandments. Amen. If you love and respect those above you or who are over you, uh, you will be the better for it. Now, back at this holy, your spirit and soul. Now, we know that body needs to be what? Sanctified. And God going to preserve the body that one day when he raised it from the dead, It'll be, it'll be for him. The body now is for him, right? Mm -hmm. yes. For him, for what? For expression. Mm -hmm. That other can see the Lord Jesus Christ in you and living through you. Holy and your spirit and your, and your soul. The spirit is the, uh, that part of man that was dead because of Adam and his disobedience, but when he was born again, he became alive under God through the Spirit of Christ. Now turn with me to the God, me to the to, uh, Romans chapter eight. If any spirit man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's what? He's none of his. You don't belong to Christ if you don't have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you. Eight. Look at verses uh, verse 5. For those who are of the flesh, those who are according to the flesh, do what? Mind, mind the, the things, things of, the of the flesh. But they who are according to the Spirit, what? Mind the things of the Spirit. So if you've been born again, you have two choices. You can, you can have mind of those things of the spirit or you can mind the things of the flesh because your old cardinal mind is still with you. But you have a new mind that's being renewed daily after the, the, uh, the, the, the image of God, dear son. And verse 6 says, For the mind is set on the flesh, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. That's why Paul said it. The peace. For the mind set on the flesh is what? Death. Mm -hmm. the, but the mind set on the spirit is peace. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. I think it's verse 16. For the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit mm -hmm. that we are what? Mm -hmm. Children, Children of God. Of God. Amen. 
that's one way you can tell whether or not you've been born again. Now, if you, if you, if you can't, if your spirit don't bear, if the Holy Spirit doesn't bear with your spirit that you are a child of God, you're not, you haven't been born again. Amen. Now, I'll say that again. Just by scripture. The spirit himself bear with our spirit that we are children of God. If a man says he's a children of God, it's because the spirit in him has confirmed the fact that he is a child of Almighty God. Amen. Right? That's what it says here. And if children, then you, you are heir of God. You have something that God has, and it's only for those who've been what? Born again and are heirs to God. Amen. Right? Amen. You can't be an heir unless you've been born into the family. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't own anything if in some other family if you're not in the family. Amen. He said, and if children heirs also. Or on the other hand, heirs of God, and on the other joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. You and Christ, if you're a child of God, you own the same thing that, that Christ owns. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're his child. And you're his child, you get everything that Christ has. That's not saying you're in control of it, but you have everything that Christ has. Amen? Amen. Then he said, I consider the sufferings of this present age, present time are not worthy to be compared with the, with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, whatever you're going through can't be compared with what Christ has prepared for you in, in your inheritance. Amen. You're going through something. Yes. But don't worry about it because when you come out of it, you got you got an heir waiting on you that belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. The, uh, okay, I'm going through something, but I know that down here, uh, further up, there's something waiting for me. Something waiting for me. When I was in the service, and before, I, about six months or so before I got out, I began to think about my home, about mom, about dad, and about my wife, even before I married. And that gave me something to actually think about coming out of the army and get back home to my parents and family. It was, a, it was an incentive. Mm -hmm. All right, say you got a new job coming. And the new job is offer you, what, uh, several thousand dollars coming. But there's something that you got to do to make sure that you're able to receive that. So you work hard. But at the same time, whatever you're going through cannot match with the anticipation of what is coming. That's what I'm talking Amen. about. This is Amen. what Paul said. No matter what you're going through, it can't be compared with what God has in store for you. Amen. So that makes me feel good about my position, what I'm going through. I don't feel so comfortable with it, but I do know on the other side, there are some great rewards mm -hmm. because Christ said it would be. Yes, amen, amen. 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 Now, the Spirit of Christ is also there for another reason, to lead and to guide, and to convict, and to convert, to lead. Um, the other day I was uh, talking to Jay, my, my son Jay, grandson, almost like my son, they both came with me for so long. The, uh, I went into his room, I think I shared it with the guys at the uh, Bible study, I mean, uh, life, uh, Wednesday morning study. I went into his room, and all over his room was Paper, um, games, clothes he'd pull off, shorts over there, all over the place. I said, Jake, what is going on here? He said, what? He had nothing going on. I said, what's all this stuff in here? How can you, how can you step in here? I just ignore it. Just ignore it. And so I'm saying that some people have their lives are so cluttered with things that are not productive what they do, they go on about that personal life and leave everything else they, they, they just, just ignore. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you ever been in the military, if you ever been a coach, and you watch young players, you teach them to put that material up, put it in a bag, mm -hmm. put it in a locker, and keep the locker room clean. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of who I am. And but most individuals nowadays, they step over 
the crushed potato chip here, yeah. <laughs> and this smash of hand bag or whatever here, mm. and, and uh, did, so they don't even kick it, then they uh, step over it, or it. step walk back on it again. Mm. So my thing is that if you have a cluttered room in the material sense, how cluttered is your life? Mm. How cluttered is your thinking? How cluttered is your, is your, is your maneuver? Want to do something? Mm. Yes. If if this is this, this if this doesn't bother you. Then there's some spiritual things that prayer doesn't bother you either. Yes. Because yes. I'm thinking that if you got a cluttered room or cl if you got a nasty car full of paper and garbage and you get get in your car to move stuff out of the way to get in your car, there's something afoot here that's not very pretty in your yeah. in your in your daily makeup mm -hmm. and who you really are. Right. You you you're actually ignoring some things in your life yes. that you should be taking care of. Yes. If you can step over this, you could you probably stepping over some spiritual things in your life. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, and it's uh, I go back to the room last night. He got back from the party. He took a shower. Here goes his towel, his uh, shorts. What is this, Jay? Wait, wait till my grandpa. He said, Come on, son. Oh, 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 okay, I get it. Over a period of time, with constant re repetition, the child will finally pick up something and begin to do some things on his own. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And so, mm. being repetitious yes. in telling, the person will finally get to a place in his life that he or she will begin to do those things that, uh, that will help them to clean their life up. Amen. Cleaning your thoughts up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. cleaning, cleaning your decision making up. Well, you're going to make a decision. As I talked to my granddaughter a couple of days ago, she, she got a car. I, I feel pretty good about it at, right now. I don't, I don't foresee anything down the road. But she's young, so there may be some things out of her. I'm telling you that because you need to talk to each other to get something done. Yes, yes. Right? I told my wife, we're going to get Jordan, you look at Jordan a car. I said, now you come on, go with me. She know about it. She said, well, I got somewhere to go. And she did. And the rain had to go to work. And so I told her, I said, come on, rain, and go with me up here to get this car. And she said, well, Dad, I got to go to work right now. And so just me and Jordan sitting there, and uh, yeah, Jay with us. And so we looked at it and said, well, what we should do? Uh, I was like, well, just go ahead. The, the key here is that you want to make sure everybody knows what you're doing. Yes. Whether or not they participate or not is another story. But at least you're going to make a major decision. You want everybody to know what's going on. Because they have no, it would have been proper for me to come back up and out where she got a brand new car or another car and her mother didn't know anything about it, her grandmother didn't know anything about it, nobody knew anything about it, but it's me and her. So if you're going to do something major, make sure that everybody is included in the decision making. Whether or not they participate or not, at least let them know. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It avoid a lot of trouble coming down the road. Amen. You didn't tell me. I don't know. You didn't say this to me. Well, come, let's let's sit down and talk about it. That's what I'm saying. And that will keep the the mind, the soul, at some kind of peace. Yes. See, the soul can really get eradicated and messed up when it's out of order. Yes. Amen. When the soul is out of order, nothing appears or nothing makes any sense anymore. I heard you speak briefly on that this morning. I don't know all the context of it, but the soul has a lot of issues. And the way those issues are handled is through the Spirit of God. Amen. He speaks to your spirit. Your spirit speaks to your soul. Mm -hmm. And your, your mind determines then whether or not, your, your mind determines, looks at the, all the information you have and then your will decide what you're going to do with the information when you get it. Am I right? Yeah. You got a mind. Mm -hmm. It's thinking. 
it, a mind doesn't do anything on its own. It can think, it can put stuff out there, but somewhere we got to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Am yes. I right? Yes. We got to make the final decision of whether or not we do whatever we do. Mm -hmm. Now, some individual, the flesh makes the decision for them. Yeah. The mind plays a very small role in their decision making. The flesh makes all their decision making. And the will carries out that because the will is weak. Because the will has no support from the Spirit of Christ. Amen. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, go with me to the book of uh, the seventh chapter of the book of um, Romans, please. We're going to touch on here briefly. Verse 7. That whole chapter is great, but verse 7. What shall we say to them? Is law sin? Absolutely not. But I, but I did not know sin except through the law. For neither did I know covenant with myself through the law. You shall not covet. But sin did what? Seizing. Seizing. You know what season mean? Mm -hmm. What do I mean? The flesh mm -hmm. and sin sees me. Mm -hmm. Why does it? I'm weak. Mm -hmm. All I got is this flesh. Mm -hmm. this, the opportunity through commandment worked out in me. Com converting of every kind of every kind for without the law the sin is what? Dead. Yeah, yeah, amen. You can sin and not even know you're sinning. Hmm, amen. Why? Because there's no law. But when the law came, oh I was Paul said I was coveting. I didn't know I was coveting. Yes, until the law yeah. told me I was. Mm -hmm. Because the natural mind doesn't mm -hmm. think look at things like that. Yes. They look at covetous as being, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. yes. But God says covetous. Mm -hmm. And I was alive mm -hmm. without, the, without the law. I was good without the law. Yes. If nobody told me what was right and wrong, I'm good. Yes, sir. That's true. But as soon as so I true. saw it, yes, sir. and then it, it, it disturbed yeah. something yes, in me. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the Ten Commandments are written here on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. right yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so every now and then, you'll just go there and look at them. I put them out because there's people who works next door here. They have a habit of coming down and smoking and then throwing a cigarette. You know? But if, sometimes, I, I, I'm sure they've looked at it and seen it already. Mm -hmm. That's should not kill. That's should not com commit adultery. That's should not bear false witness. That's should not father and mother. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff is out there. And, but if you don't know it, you think it's all right. No yes. doubt. Yes. No doubt. Yes. Everybody else is doing it. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So yeah. good. Yeah. No That's doubt. Right. But when you realize that God says it's wrong, it's wrong, and then you keep on doing it, Jeez. that means you were not without strength. Yes. Yes, yes sir. You don't have the power no to doubt. break mm. uh, the desires of the flesh. Yes, sir. And I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, and sin revived, and I died. Mm -hmm. And the commandment which was unto life, this was very commandment was found in me unto death. That which should have brought life was actually killing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Was actually killing me. No doubt the Lord, the, 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 God gave me this commandment, and I thought it was to bring life in me, but I said, kill me. Because it, it, it brought up all, all that was wrong in me. Yes, I didn't know what, what was wrong in me until I saw the Ten Commandments. Amen. <clears throat> Otherwise, I was good. Mm -hmm. As long as you didn't read those Ten Commandments to me, Paul said, I was good. But once you brought them up, then I found, oh, I ain't no good. For saying season, look, season again, the opportunity. Opportunity to me, they found a place. They found a way to get to me. Mm -hmm. Through the commandment, deceive and through it, kill me. Every time, it killed me. I didn't know it 
It's supposed to give me life, but in fact, it killed me. How do I know it's killing me? Because the law said, the law, the Ten Commandments say what's killing me. Yes. So then, the law is holy, the commandment holy and righteous mm -hmm. and good. All that's good, because that's God. Yes. But I can't keep God's commandments. They're the one that kill me. For through the, through, the, through the law was the knowledge of what? Knowledge of sin. Amen. Then, then, did that then which is good become death to me? Absolutely not. But sin did. It showed me the sin that I had in me. Mm -hmm. Yes. That it might be shown to me to be sin by working out death in me through which is good. Sin through commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Once you find out how sinful, how sinful the particular act is, it becomes more sinful. Yes. You don't want to even go near it. You don't want to even touch it. But you can't help yourself when there is no power to deter you or to keep you from getting involved. Amen. That's right. That's right. Jesus is the one that keeps us, right? Yes. Amen. He can keep you from getting involved with something of the flesh. I think he puts in here that why the, the flesh is nullified by the presence of Almighty God. Let's look at one more, then we're going to go back and check this over now. I'm not going to sleep too long, folks. Verse 25. I think it, it kind of concludes this chapter. We're talking about chapter 7? Chapter 7, verse 25. Okay. It, it, it's a conclusion oh, yeah. statement here that Paul yes, uses. But I, I'll suggest you read this whole chapter, John. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. Yeah, it is. I had all these all this problems. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Yeah, with my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every time the flesh is doing something, it's breaking the law, the law of sin. Yes. Sin is a law. Mm -hmm. Life is a law, and sin is a law. Now, back to uh, Thessalonians. And he says he wants to keep all these particulars holy and without blame. The soul, I mean, the, the spirit, the soul and the body be preserved blameless and without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when Christ comes, he wants the body blameless. Yes. Right? Yes. It's not participating in something contrary to what his desires are. When he comes back, he wants the soul spotless and blameless. He wants the spirit spotless and blameless also. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, the soul also consists of your mind, your will, your emotions, and what else? Your conscience. If your conscience is not working properly, that means that you probably don't have the spirit of life in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't have, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. I had, Before I met Jesus, my conscience worked just fine. Mm -hmm. It didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, Right. That's Did your conscience bother you? No, they didn't bother no, you. No, no. I'm they were wrong. fine. Yeah. Before I met Jesus. Yes, no, that's true. Right. But then I met Jesus, and everything I did, I thought of, my conscience mm. was all right there. Yeah. Sticking up a red flag. Uh uh. Watch that with it. Don't do that with it. Right. Don't say that with it. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you need to repent with it. You need to go to God and ask him for forgiveness because mm -hmm. you done just something wrong here. So the Spirit of Christ is, the, the Spirit of Christ. A lie awakens the dead conscience. Yes. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. The deadness of the conscience dead because of mm -hmm. the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you don't live and if you're not been born again and don't uh, make decisions. Don't make decisions based on your what conscience. Mm -hmm. yes, That's right. Don't speak. I heard people say all that. Let your conscience lead you. It will lead you straight to hell too. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you, yeah. you go by your conscience. Yes, Your conscience you know. can't lead you. No, the Holy right. Spirit has to be one to lead you Amen. and guide you into Amen. all truth. The Amen. conscience will not guide, but the conscience will throw a red flag. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. And help you see. Yes. You can't sleep at night. You wonder what's bothering you. It's the Holy Spirit in the life of the conscience. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's bothering you. Yes. Yep. 
He, see, he, he made your conscience. He's involved with your conscience. He involved with your mind. He involved with your emotions. He involved, involved with your sin. He all involved with everything you have of the soul. Yes. If you trust him, what he's going to do, he's going to enlighten and give life to all those dope parts of the soul. Yes. yes. So you go to bed at night and you wake up and something bothers you, you say, what's that to go away? It ain't going away because the conscience is there to awaken you to the fact that you need to do something to repent yes, or make a decision about something. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. You can't sleep. Uh, that's why Paul said, don't go to bed with the uh, don't go to bed with evil. Yeah. Yeah, don't go to rap. Because you do, uh, you, know, shut, you, you can shut your conscience down now. Yeah. You can shut yes. your own conscience down by ignoring yeah. what it has showed you. Yeah, uh, your, your, your con yeah conscience, go, go ahead, Jay. Your conscience can become seared yeah. with a hot iron. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Why well, you, you know, deny it so much mm -hmm. till the conscience becomes seared. True. The yeah. flesh has uh, a covetous so to the point of where mm -hmm. the Spirit of Christ even is. He's there, yeah. but he's not working anymore because you're not even listening to him. You listen to your dead conscience. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And your dead conscience will get you in trouble. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Big time. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, if you're living in the spirit, mm -hmm. you want the spirit to be active in your mind. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to be active in your conscience. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Be active in your will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be active in your emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your emotions. This is, the, this is the soul eating. Right. Yes. Your emotions can actually run your life. Yes. I get mad at James, and I'm not speaking to James. Well, that's my emotion. Mm -hmm. so yes. True. Yes. I get upset with Earl. When I see him, I turn my head and just mm -hmm. keep on up. Oh, that's, that's, that's my emotion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I won't even talk to you. I'm upset with you. Mm -hmm. Who, your emotions are the, are the running, running things here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I make, and you make the bad decisions of your emotion. Well, yes. Well. Yes. Right here? You can make some terrible decisions based on your emotions. Yeah. Yes. Because your emotions are, are reigning then here. Yes. It's said he's reigning. Yeah. And so I'm going to make a decision. How can you make a decision if emotions are, are making a decision for you? Yeah. Amen. And, and, and you agree with it, your mind does and then you carry it out in your will. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And so many things are ignored. And so many people are hurt. So many of our lives are confused. And, and you and you're beat to death yourself. You won't know what you can do about it. But you're not living by the spirit of Christ. Amen. Your Amen. conscience is running your your, your 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 emotions are running your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your emotions. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know the word of God itself can get to a point that becomes so emotional to you that it can run your life. Yes. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the word here. Mm -hmm. But your spirit should be running your life with the word. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You cannot allow the word itself to run your life. Mm -hmm. You need the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. To apply it properly, mm -hmm. to maneuver around some things, to make sure it's done properly. Yes. When Jesus was, was here, he walked by what? By the Spirit. He knew the law. He obeyed the law. He, yeah. he was behind the law. He had authored the law, yeah. but he allowed the Spirit to maneuver him through all the stuff that he went through on his way to the cross. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, one more thing. I don't have that offense, but praise God. If you you go to the cross, there are so many things that are designed to hinder you. Mm. From mm. going mm. to the cross. Because when Jesus in his uh earthly ministry, there were many things that were designed to hinder him from going to the cross. If you take a notice of the book of uh, Luke and, and Mark and the, you'll, you'll find those things. I can't go into all that, right? Yeah. And and with us, yeah. there's a cross for us. Yeah. But there's so we've already been to the cross. But it, but Satan does everything he can in his diabolical skin to hinder us from experiencing the cross. Yes. The dying. Mm. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. He gives you pleasure. He gives you money. Yeah. He gives you materialistic. Mm -hmm. He yes. gives you all that kind of stuff to, oh, you can you can do better than this, to hinder you from going mm -hmm. to the cross to be to enjoy it. No, 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 no. 
to enjoy mm -hmm. your crucifixion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could I use that word? Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Once you know what it's all about, you begin to enjoy it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it it's already has occurred. All you have to do is not go through the process mm -hmm. and experience the crucifixion at the cross. Yes. And Satan does everything he can mm -hmm. to keep you from going there because I know you go there, he has no more control of you because you're dead to the world. Yes. Amen. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, yeah, I live. I live. Mm -hmm. not, not my I, I, but Christ in me who loved me and gave himself for me. That's how that works. The soul uh, has many, many issues. Mm -hmm. But Christ has taken care of all of the soul issues. Mm -hmm. But you have to be the one who says, I want this to happen in my life. I want Christ to have this in my life. Mm -hmm. And when you say that, you got to really mean it. Yes. 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 And don't let nothing stop you mm -hmm. from pursuing Christ yes. and the cross. Right. Amen. The cross is the answer here. Yep. Yes. It'll deal with your soul issues. It'll deal with your emotional issues. Mm -hmm. It'll deal with everything. Go with me to one more passage of scripture. Uh, that was in Galatians, I think. I was quoted just previously. But there is also one in Galatians in chapter chapter six. And they will close on that. Chapter six. No, chapter 5, I believe it was. Chapter 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit, oh my God. <clears throat> uh, beginning at uh, chapter 5. I think I began at verse 16. Mm -hmm. Galatians 16. But we're, we're not going to, we're going to linger here for a while. Let's go, let's go here. Chapter... 50, chapter 5, verse 16. You see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say, well, walk by the what? Spirit. And and you shall not uh, fulfill by no means the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. See, the Spirit is the one that gives you victory. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No victory, no spirit. Mm -hmm. once, once the devil can have you take your eye off of Christ, then you're on your own. Let's read through that. For the, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, for these oppose each other that you should not do the thing that you desire. You can't do the thing that you desire, uh, keep the law, or do anything without the spirit. But you are, but if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the, the law. And the works of the flesh are manifested. These are works of the flesh without any control of the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, some people can go through this thing and you can't find a lot in them. Look here. But if, if and the works of the flesh are manifest which are, are such things as what? Fornication. Mm -hmm. That's a work of the flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not the spirit, it's of the flesh. Yes. And your mind agrees with the flesh to go ahead and pursue this type of activity, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit is there, and the Spirit is opposed to that. Yeah. Yes. He's opposed to that. But you go ahead anyway. That means you're absolutely disobedient to the Spirit of Christ. Now, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you don't have any, 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 any uh, we call the word, any uh, other way to go than go yeah. with the yeah. Any mm -hmm. choice, yes. Yeah, any choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's it, 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 it overpowers you. Yes. When I was in the world, I went along with the flesh. Whatever the flesh asked me to do, whatever the flesh provided for me, I pursued it with all my heart. Yes. When Christ came into your heart, you pursue those things that are His. So you avoid fornication. Then it says, uncleanness, mm -hmm. lasciviousness, and do your own work, research on these words. Mm -hmm. uh, idolatry, sorcery, intimates, strife, Jealousy, outbursts of anger, and some people have still outbursts. I have outbursts of anger sometimes myself, mm -hmm. but not as frequent as they used to be. Amen, amen. And when they come now, they're not as violent as violent as they used to be. Amen. Because they used to come out, you can stand me, but I'm saying they, 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 they through the spirit of Christ, they've gotten less and less 
uh, uh, volatile because of the spirit of Christ is now conforming me to the image of, my, of, 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 of Jesus Christ. Amen. The works of offensive benefits are these such as fornication, all right, idolatry, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, factions, division, sex, envy, oh my God, bounce of drunkenness, carousing, and things which are these of which I tell you beforehand, and I have told you before, those who practice, not saying that it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen even to a believer, but those who practice, it is. Such things shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's going back to the book of Romans where it was all this later for you. You're not your heir. And you get all of this, but if you practice this, you won't get anything. Amen. Now he says, those who are Christians who live in where? Under the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Or in conjunction with the power of the Holy Spirit. And their souls have been transforming and being transformed to that of Jesus Christ. But the Spirit, but the, but the fruit of the Spirit. He said fruits. He said the fruit mm -hmm. of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Is love, right? Yeah. Yes. Joy. Yes. Peace. Yes. Long suffering. Yes. Kindness. Yes. Goodness, meekness, goodness, faithfulness. Yes. All these of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whenever you see this performing and work, working in a person's life, you can bet your money they are operating out of the Spirit. Now let me say this to you before I go any further. That you can masquerade this. Right? Mm -hmm. Anything that God has, Satan can mimic it. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's a deceiver. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. So it doesn't matter if you if you if you have decided to work here and manifest these, this fruit. Mm -hmm. Is it of the spirit or is it of the, of the, of, of the natural man? Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Because some people can be just as, just as, look just as good as you do, I do, about things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, later on, if you stay around them long enough, you'll find out that that's, that's not so. And they can still be very nice, very kind, very sweet, very loving, but the Spirit of Christ will reveal to you, this is just phony. Amen. Amen. It ain't real. Amen. You ever experience that, Elmer? It ain't real. That's right. Amen. Because the flesh is such a, a deceitful aspect of the, of the human anatomy that it, 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 it can deceive you. I'm yes. sure that when, I'm sure that when Jesus was with those 12 disciples, the only one he really, the only one that really knew who, who Jews was, was Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You see what I'm saying? You didn't hear anywhere in scripture that uh, any of the disciples ever decided to say, well, Jews ain't nothing but a crook. Ain't nothing but a liar. He's a thief. You ain't never seen nowhere in scripture that any of those no disciples saw those characteristics in Judas. Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus in the spirit, he that chose them, he could recognize that in him even though others couldn't. Right. Can you see that? He said, I chose you 12, but one of you what? Is a thief. Yes. And the other side was, we talking about? He talking about me. They didn't know he was talking about Jews, but the scripture pointed out that he was talking about Jews. Jews who? Jews is a character. Yes. So be careful not to embrace someone because they're, they're nice and kind and sweet. It could be bitter. Yes. It's wormwood. Yes. Stay around a person long enough where you can, uh, if you're living in the spirit yourself, pick up what he is or what is she or who she is. Yes, amen. The spirit will reveal to you another brother. Yes. Or another sister. Yes. If he's real. Now, if you, if they're fake, you can pick up on that very quickly if you're living in the spirit. Yes. But if you just want to be friends with me and be nice to me, fine. But someone on the road, we got to get real here. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got to get real. Mm -hmm. And you get real when you're in the spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Amen. He said, he will lead you. Lead you where? Mm -hmm. He'll lead me to Jay. Mm -hmm. He called the sovereign. He'll lead me to Jay and lead me to Jane. And 
He ain't telling me to bring a, make an assessment of you. But the answer is, is what's coming out of you? Is it the spirit of Christ? Or is it some other spirit? Amen. And they can mimic. The devil can, it's dirt, very deceitful. Amen. Very deceitful. Yes, he is. Yeah, he'll lead and guide you right on down the, the, the highway, right into a, a, a truck. Get your yeah. brains block, blocked out. How did that get here? He led you by a nice little person, a nice kind gentleman, a nice whatever he is. She is very deceitful. Now look what it says here. Meekness, self-control against sin. There's no, there no self-law. But, but, they, they who? Who is he talking about? They. He's talking about you and I. Yes. Those of us that have overcome, over overcoming. Yes. Right? There are two people he's talking about here. Those who are not and those who are. Yes. Those who are practicing and those who are not practicing. Mm -hmm. Right? For they who are of the Christ have what? Crucified. Crucified. They've gone to the cross. Yeah. Yes. They didn't make anything stop them. Yes. Their emotions didn't stop them. Nothing about them in their soul hindered them from making this pro may have slowed them down sometimes, but it did not stop them from pursuing the cross that Christ had, had designed for them. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Nobody said Jesus when he pretty when his first time, he just took our running to the cross. <laughs> 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 it, it, it wasn't that. Right. And when you get saved. Uh, this is a cross for you. But once you find out what a cross is, you, you don't run to it either. But God God maneuvers you and your love for Christ pursues you to the point that where you begin to deal with those things that the cross wants you to deal with. Right. Amen. That makes sense? Amen. Nobody is eager to go to a cross. Mm -hmm. I think Jesus said that night and the God against him. Uh, take this thing. Take this from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So when you dealing with something of wrong those nature, and you you don't want to you don't want to cross that, you, you ain't running, but you know that it's God's will, Amen. and you want to do God's will Amen. to get God's will accomplished in your personal life. Amen. Then he drops down here. <coughs> if we live by the Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. We're working with the Spirit now. We we, we, we already know what the 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 the, 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 soap, the uh, flesh is. It, it's corrupt. There's no good thing in the flesh. Can anyone name me something good about the flesh? When Paul said, there's no good thing. There's not. No, there's not. Nothing. Think about it. Nothing. It can do some good things, but they ain't no good. Amen. The thing that it does ain't no good. Amen. Because they're all about what? Amen. The flesh is very, very what? Selfish. Yes. I have yet to look at my own personal life, and I want you to look at your own, mm -hmm. and see whether you ever did anything out of the flesh and it benefits somebody else. If you did anything, it was it for alternative reasons. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right. Ha. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I don't see it. I don't, not, not, not my personal life. The flesh is no good. That's right. The flesh. Even when it does good things, it's still not good. Amen. It's for your own particular reasons Amen. that you do things out of the yeah. flesh. Amen. Your emotions, the cross is going to deal with that. You don't make decisions out of your emotions. You make decisions based on God's word and the leading of the spirit of Christ. Amen. Verse 25, if you be led, uh, if, you, if we be led by the, by the spirit, let us who? All wars will walk after the spirit. spirit. Amen. Now Paul didn't say Amen. you guys. He said we. Yes, he and he said Amen. us. Mm -hmm. He's including himself. Yes. Amen. So anytime you hear a preacher or a teacher or somebody rise up and they exclude themselves, something wrong here. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I'm a servant of Christ, always I ought to include myself. Mm -hmm. We. Us. Because yes. all of us are striving to what? To be just like Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if I were already like Jesus Christ, then I'll just exclude myself and say, "You guys, right?" Amen. Be honest about it. Then he says, "Let this is key here. Let us not become vain glorious or doing things receiving our own glory that don't mean nothing. Provoking, but provoking one another to envy one another. Don't do that." Yes. I think the 
last one is uh, that may have been the last one. Yeah. Walking in the spirit, the soul, get that get that guy straight. Uh, you know, uh, you remember Kadna, uh, Brother Bob? Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you seen him lately? Mm -hmm. uh, he's a little bit larger than you. Mm -hmm. That guy was awesome lately. Mm -hmm. So the other day we was talking, and something came by. I said, well, man, you look good. I said, man, you, that, that man, that man, that look. I said, well, what about that, what about that guy inside? He said, what guy? I said, the, the guy inside, it, how is he? Oh, 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 he's not too good. Mm -hmm. See, we can look good outside, but there's a person in a man here yes. who really needs Christ's attention. Yes, amen. The thing is that we don't give we don't give the other man too much attention. All attention to them. Yes, and, 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 and they, we don't give him too much attention. Yes. So what we don't need to do is just allow Christ to take get that full attention from the other man. Yes. Then he can develop him and grow him and mature him. So when he expressed mm -hmm. through this corporal body, he expresses the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. The inner man is the, is the person that most of us ought to be working on. Yeah. Yes. Women, boys, girls, granddaddies, grandmamas, we ought to be having that inner man looked at every day. Amen. Not so much this guy dressing him up, mm -hmm. making him look good, smell mm -hmm. good. I was in the car with my wife, she said, well, you smell good. Well, I said, I just took a bath. She said, I'm not talking about that. I said, what, what are you talking about then? The end of the outward man is who we first see. Yes. And we impress mm. with all we see. Yep. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why we go to the gym, Jake. You leave muscle, man, so we can impress you when we see you. But you got to look past that. Look past that. Yes. Don't be... Uh, don't get carried away with people fresh and fresh. Man. Just because God can speak good and sound good, don't get carried away with that. Mm -hmm. Stay right there, and then you really find out who this guy is on the inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. This guy on the inside is perhaps nothing like this guy that you see. Amen. Don't you resemble him? Yeah. He, he, he's, he's in a sheet. Mm -hmm. He's in a house. Mm -hmm. Just tap it like it. And every now and then, he'll stick his head out. Every now and then. So make sure that you take care of that, that guy on the inside. Amen. You're going to build him up, build him up with strong faith, mm -hmm. strong task of faith, mm -hmm. strong enduring faith, all that kind of thing. Build him up. Yeah. You, may be, you may not look good on the outside, but boy, there's a tremendous man on the inside that looks just like Jesus. Yes. May God bless you. Yes. May heaven smile upon you.